I'm gonna be honest, I don't drink a lot of coffee because it freaks me out. And when I do drink coffee, I drink decaf because it actually has quite a bit of caffeine in it. But whether or not you have cultivated this craving, knowing how to make coffee is a valuable skill. And to make your very own cup of joe, you're gonna need three things. You need coffee, you need water, and you need some brewing method, like some way of heating them up together and then separating out the stuff that you don't wanna have in the coffee. Coffee comes in a variety of roasts and is either ground or whole bean. If it's ground, you don't need the added expense of getting a bean grinder. However, if you have a bean grinder or you wanna get one, whole beans tend to retain more flavor because you can grind the beans right before you brew. Most coffee aficionados recommend a burr grinder, but a blade grinder is more affordable and the difference between the two, it's not gonna ruin your day. Either grinder might have some setting that controls coarseness to fineness of the grind. You might also find that this happens in the grocery store. You can actually buy the whole beans and then grind them with the grocery store grinder, and you can also set the coarseness of the grind there. As a general rule of thumb, the longer your coffee is in contact with the water, the coarser you want the grounds. So your brewing method usually dictates the coarseness of your coffee. If the intimidatingly hip coffee roaster asks you what kind of grind you want for your beans, you can confidently tell them your method of coffee brewing, and they will produce the grind that corresponds. Now let's talk about roasts. These exist on a spectrum that goes from light roast to dark roast. Maybe somewhat counterintuitively, light roasts have more caffeine in them, and they taste more acidic, like citrusy and bright. Light roasts will also retain a lot more of what they call the flavor information from the place where they were grown. So a light roast from Ethiopia will probably taste different than a light roast from Guatemala, if you can tell the difference at all which I can't. Dark roasts, not so much. The flavor of a dark roast is much more dependent upon the roasting process itself than where the coffee was grown. In general, a darker roast will be less acidic and contain less caffeine. Think dark and smoky and bold. Like a lot of people will say that it's like nutty or chocolatey, but if you're expecting this to taste like a Snickers bar, you will be disappointed. Unless you put a lot of sugar and cream in, which is what I do. <laughs> and as you might expect, medium roasts are in the middle. Water is easy to overlook, but bad tasting water will result in bad tasting coffee, so use the best tasting water that you have available. That might be a water filter in the fridge, or bottled water, or cold water from the tap if you live in a place where you really like the tap water like I do. Now many people believe that hard water or water with more minerals helps bring out the flavor of the coffee, so keep that in mind when selecting your water source. Finally, you must select a coffee brewing method with all of its trappings. Uh, there are a bazillion ways to brew coffee. This, a Brazilian. Overnight steeps to make a cold brew, methods that involve fancy espresso machines, but we're gonna focus on three methods that are relatively affordable and available when you are in a hurry. Method one is drip coffee. Uh, it's this, this one right here. It uses an electrical drip brewer or a filter coffee machine. It's the automated version of a pour over. I call it a coffee maker. This method is also going to need some coffee filters, which you can get from any grocery store. We're gonna use the kind that you can turn into a snowflake or compost, but there are reusable filters out there. Make sure that you get the right size for your coffee maker. A tiny baby coffee filter in a giant basket will result in much sadness. To make the coffee, you first decide how much coffee you want and fill accordingly with water. Then you place the filter in the basket and the coffee grounds in the filter. A good rule of thumb is one to two tablespoons of coffee grounds per six ounces of coffee, but I've definitely just eyeballed this before, so I promise you it's not the end of the world if you just throw some coffee in and you're like, that seems about right. If you're feeling like super fancy or scientific, you can take out a kitchen scale and measure out a ratio between the water and the coffee of one to 15 to one to 18. So like, we're talking one unit of coffee to 18 units of water. Then all you have to do is turn on the coffee machine and voila! You are the bathrobe person in that coffee commercial. Method two is called the French press, or cafetiere, or coffee press, or a bunch of other names depending on your geography. For this method, you will need this object, which is basically just a cup with a piston and a disc on it, and the disc separates the grounds from the drinky part. You will also need a kettle or some other way of heating water. First, determine how much coffee you would like to make. Measure out the corresponding amount of coffee grounds to water with the disc piston portion out. Layer the grounds at the bottom of the cylinder. Then heat your water. If you're feeling extra fancy, you can use a thermometer to get the water to about 195 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius. But if you don't have one, just boil the water, then turn off the stove and wait a little while, like 30 to 60 seconds 
seconds for it to cool off some. With the water at the correct temperature, pour about half of it in and set a timer for four minutes. 30 to 60 seconds into the four minutes, use a spoon or a chopstick or whatever sanitary utensil you have around to break up the crust of coffee and mix it all up. Then pour in the rest of the water and with the piston pulled all the way up, put the lid on. Wait to plunge, meditate, take an Instagram photo, practice your catchphrase, whatever you need to do until you've made it to four minutes. Now slowly push that piston down and savor the moment once you have pushed it all the way down, pour it into your mug or a carafe so that it doesn't steep too long and get bitter. Our last method requires the least amount of equipment, so very little investment, but you have to be careful or you find yourself with a bitter and crunchy brew. If you have coffee grounds and water in some way to heat the water to boiling, you can make cowboy coffee. Grind your beans or select your grind at the store somewhere between the coarse grind that you use for French press and the slightly less coarse grind for electric brew. Then measure out your coffee to water ratio. Heat the water alone in your kettle or pot or can to boiling and set it aside for 30 to 60 seconds, just like you would for the French press coffee. Set a timer for four minutes, then add the grounds to the heated water and stir thoroughly to get a good steep. You might want to give it another good stir when you're halfway through your four minutes. Finally, since you don't have that French press plunger, take a handful of cold water and sprinkle it on the grounds to encourage them to sink to the bottom of the pot. Now carefully pour the coffee out of the pot and take care to avoid getting grounds in your mug. You'll probably want to pour out all of the coffee you'd like to drink at this point because if you let it steep in there any longer, it will ultimately result in jet fuel, but like, I'm not here to judge. Regardless of whether you brew your coffee over a campfire or in the fanciest of machines, you are now participating in a ritual humans have been performing for hundreds of years. If you have any coffee making tips or tricks that you'd like to share or have a topic that you'd like us to cover, that's what the comments are for. They're down there. We will also be in them, seeing what you have to say. And if you want to learn more about adulting with Rachel and me, you can go to youtube.com slash learn how to adult and subscribe. It's really all about the smell for me. I don't like... I love the, I, like, I don't, I don't love the taste of coffee, but the smell, I will smell it all day. This method is also going to need some coffee filters, which you can get from any grocery store, medium, or steal them from work. Then all you have to do is turn on the coffee machine and voila, you are the bathrobe person in the coffee commercial. <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, then you just uh, put, put the water into the grounds and set your timer for about a minute. I. I figured I was gonna be wrong. My dad, when he comes to visit, because we don't have like a ton of coffee in the house, yeah. he like walks to the espresso stand. Oh, I want to do that again. Go back, go back to medium close. And that was the final. That was, we were ending, yes. Also, I think I said meer, like I made a noise. <laughs> 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 <laughs>